Okay, we're going to go ahead and graph this equation. Uh, we're going to first do this using algebra, and then we're going to uh, use calculus. Okay, and you're going to see the relationship between algebra and calculus. In my book, this is going to be pretty cool. But a lot of you out there, you you know, you see this word calculus, and your expression might be something like calculus. Oh no, not anything but calculus. You know, it's like a you know, a bad uh, horror movie or whatnot. But listen, calculus is actually super cool. And now, is it advanced? Yes, it is uh, pretty advanced mathematics. But uh, what I'm going to show you is just a little tiny uh, sample of how powerful calculus is. And it's quite actually easy to understand and um, uh, manipulate this problem to actually uh, graph this thing. Okay, so hopefully my goal is to have you leave the video looking like this. And I'm going to get into uh, this, obviously, um, you know, step by step. But if you are in algebra, any algebra course, you're going to be expected to be able to graph something like this. Okay, now what are we talking about? Well, this is a quadratic equation. And uh, the graph of this thing is going to be some parabola, either like this or like this. But we're going to get into the specifics of this problem in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I'd like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be uh, the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of uh, this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here shortly. Very excited about that. Love uh, teaching uh, advanced mathematics. So if you are at that level and you like my teaching style, just in a couple of weeks, I will have my course launched. But I also have many, many courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, CLEP exam, ALEX exam, teacher certification exam, uh, nursing school entrance exam, all those exams and many others have a good amount of math on them. And if you don't do well on the math uh, portion, you don't do well on the exam. So let me help you out. Just go to my uh, website, check out my full course catalog. I should have your exam. Now, if I do not, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot in the area of um, uh, homeschooling. Okay, so if you homeschool, if you're an independent learner, I have a great homeschool learning uh, system. And then obviously I help those of you that are just having a tough time in your current math uh, course. Now. If you're serious about wanting to be better at math, you, know, you got to ask yourself uh, whether you're serious or not. Because if you're just looking for shortcuts, guess what? I'm going to tell you that's a dead-end strategy. But if you are serious, you're like, yes, I'm serious. I'm willing to work hard. Well, then you got to do this. you got to take great math notes. So over uh, decades of teaching math, uh, the one thing that is clear to me that those students who have great math notes almost always end up doing very, very well. And the reverse is true. Those students who like to look at their cell phone talk to their friends, do homework in other uh, for other classes during math class. You know what I'm talking about. You know, I did all this stuff way back in the good old 1980s. Of course, we didn't have any cell phones. If I had a cell phone back then, I'm not even sure I would have uh, graduated high school. But uh, that's a different story. But the bottom line is that, hey, listen, I didn't take... Uh, uh, math that serious and my grades which were like this reflected that right so that's why I asked you if you're serious about wanting to learn math and be great at it then you're gonna have to put in the work and that means no taking that's a daily thing and uh, the reason why it's so important is because it keeps you focused focus is the key to success in learning anything and uh, if you just look at your notes that's gonna be a good reflection on how well you've been focused and don't be like don't rely on uh, teacher handouts or your friend's notes and be like, oh, I got I got notes, you know, no big deal. No, no, you need to take the notes. That's how you get the information to stick into your long-term memory, all right? So believe me when I tell you, you got to take great math notes, but you still need th uh, something to study from. So I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to help you out. Those uh, include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry, okay? So uh, you can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so let's talk about this right here. This is a parabola. Now, if you think you know how to graph this parabola, definitely do so. Pause the video and, you know, it shouldn't take you too long to uh, graph it. But let me just quickly talk about um, parabolas. I'm going to talk about a few basic um, uh, fundamental things in algebra, right? So let's just do this. This is going to come into play here. Uh, in just a second. All right, so here 
here's x, here's y. So uh, if I have a line like this, okay, all right, so let's say it's y equals 2x plus 1. What is the slope? Well, the slope is 2. I don't really care what the specific slope of this line is, but I want you to know that the slope is positive. Okay, remember y equals mx plus b, all that kind of good stuff. So lines that increase from left to right, the slope is positive. You should know that, all right? Now, lines that drop this way, what do you think the slope is? You're like, is it negative? Yes, you are right. It is negative, right? So when uh, lines decrease from left to right, the slope is negative. So, you know, a line like this might be like y equals negative 3x plus 2, something like that, okay? By the way, this y equals mx plus b, the m is the slope, okay? So that's why I'm using this variable m. All right, how about lines that are perfectly horizontal? What is the slope, okay? Well, the slope is zero, okay? The slope is zero, and then that leaves us with vertical lines. What is the slope of a vertical line? Well, it happens to be undefined, okay? There is no slope, right? So what I really want you to keep in mind is that when lines increase from left to right, or anything, okay, it could be a line, uh, well, no, just a line, okay? When a line increases from left to right, the slope is positive. When it drops, it's negative. And specifically here, when it's horizontal, perfectly flat, it's zero, all right? So remember that. Now I'm gonna erase this, and then I'm gonna uh, sketch out a quick parabola, and then we're actually going to uh, get into this problem. But this is kind of the pre-work. I need to do a quick review for you here. Um, so we understand this. Okay, so let's just have, let's just draw some parabola like this. Uh, let's do it this way, okay? All right, now let's think, this is not a line, but the parabola is, you know, if we think about the slope, what is the slope of this parabola, okay? Well, it has different slopes, right? Here, this is kind of going downhill like so, all right? So this portion of the parabola, its slope is negative, right? Pretty obvious. This portion of the parabola, its slope is positive, okay? So how about down here? Well, it's still uh, negative, right? It's still kind of going like this. And even down here, it's still kind of like positive. So it's still negative here. It's still positive right there as well, right? So. It's going like this way, it's negative, and then eventually it's gonna end up uh, being positive. But you know, at one point, it's gotta do its U-turn, okay? It's gonna have to go like, it's gonna, at this one specific point right here, there is one exact point where the slope of this parabola is zero, okay? Where the slope of that parabola is zero. That's when it's doing its U-turn, there's one point okay i want you to keep that in mind because this is going to uh, come into play here right and we call this an inflection point in uh, calculus all right so or if you look at this as kind of like the bottom of this calculus more technical name would be like um uh, a minimum level all right so this is very very important so slopes um you know we're, when we talk about the slope we were talking about um things that are more um, than just like a line, right? We're kind of using that same concept with other graphs as well, like this parabola, right? Now this line, just a little nomenclature here, that touches this parabola at that one single point, that's called a tangent line, right? Just a little uh, terminology. If you heard that word tangent, that's what it means. But I want you to keep in mind that this parabola has slope over here, it's a uh, negative, and then at that exact point, it's zero, and then it increases positive, all right? So keep that in mind, because this is going to help us understand uh, a little bit about calculus. All right, so let's get right to it. And now let's go ahead and graph this quadratic equation. So what do we need to, uh, to do here? Well, we need to find the vertex. The, the vertex is that point that I just talked about. It's going to be the very, very top or the very, very bottom of the parabola. Okay, so you can see I already did the work here. That is the answer to the vertex. So if you got that right, that's excellent. And then we want to know uh, whether this parabola is a sad parabola or a happy parabola. Okay, you can see this is a this parabola is happy to be a parabola. It's like I love being a parabola. It's so much fun. Uh, this guy over here, he's sad that he's a parabola. So parabolas that are sad 
or have this shape, okay? Happy parabolas have this shape, U shaped like this. There's, these negative ones are, go like so. And so I'm gonna tell you um, how we determine uh, whether a parabola is happy or sad, but we need to uh, know two things to get a basic sketch for this parabola. We wanna know the vertex and we wanna know whether it's sad or happy, and then we can get a basic sketch. All right, so how do we find the vertex? Well, we need to um, use that business uh, and hopefully you've already uh, learned this, but it's that AX squared plus BX plus C. I don't know if you've worked with the quadratic equation, uh, but, or sorry, the quadratic formula, but what we would like to uh, write quadratic equations, what we call in standard form, from highest to lowest power. So this is X squared, then we have X, and then we have a number. So it's decreasing here. So the number in front of the X squared is A, Okay, we call that the coefficient, or specifically here in this case, this is the leading coefficient. Uh, this number right here is B. Okay, you just see how this matches up, and then this last number is C. Okay, so we need to know that. All right, so the formula, okay, to uh, find the x coordinate of the vertex. So the vertex is an x y point. So to find this x coordinate, we have to use this little uh, formula, minus b over 2a. So we're just going to plug in our a, b, c's here, a, b, c's. So what is b? b is a negative 10. What's a? Well, there is a positive 1 right there, positive 1. Okay, that's what a is equal to. b is uh, negative 10. So to find the x coordinate, again, it's going to be minus b over 2a. So it's minus, minus 10, right, or negative 10. All right, you don't, this is a... Uh, that B, you got to plug in an actual negative 10 value, just like this, so be careful. Uh, 2 times 1, right? 1, again, is A. So this is going to simplify as 10 divided by 2 or 5. All right, so that is what the X coordinate is for our vertex. All right, now how do we find the Y coordinate? Very simple. Once we have our X answer, we're going to plug it in to our uh, function up here. Let me erase this stuff. Okay, just to be very precise about everything. Okay, so once we have our x answer, so that's 5, that's the x coordinate. To get y, we're going to plug in uh, our answer, which is 5, right in here for these x's. And when we do all this math, we'll get y. So let's do that here. We'll plug in 5 for x. And you can see here's 5 squared minus 10 times 5 plus 28. When I do all that lovely arithmetic, I get y is equal to 3. Okay, so y is equal to 3, that is the y coordinate for my vertex, so my vertex is 5, 3. Okay, so we're getting someplace. Now I need to know if this is a happy or a sad parabola. Well, we have to go back over here to our a value, okay, this guy right here, the leading coefficient. And uh, I don't really care what the number is, I, I care whether this is positive or negative, okay? Now, this case, what is this? Well, this is a positive 1. It's positive. So this indicates a happy parabola. Hey, yes, I love being a parabola. If it was negative, so when uh, leading coefficient is positive, it's going to be like this. If it's a negative value, like a negative 3 or whatever the case is, it'll be sad. All right, this parabola is very sad. It's like I have a tough life. I'm a parabola. I'll always be a parabola. Well, listen, okay, in this case, well, you know, let's get back to, uh, and by the way, you got to have fun with math. If you're saying, well, hey, Mr. YouTube math teacher, stop trying to be a comedian. Just tell me exactly how to uh, do this problem. Well, listen, you gotta, um, you'll remember this now because you'll think this is so hokey. Uh, you're like, oh, my gosh, the happy, sad parabola thing. Well, listen. Leading coefficient is positive, so I'm going to have a basic shape like this. There's my vertex, so let's go ahead and plot this stuff right here. So my vertex would be right here, 5, 3, and then here is my lovely happy parabola, just a basic sketch. Now, there's other things I could do. I could create an XY table of value, uh, values here to you know give me a little more precise graph, and there's axis of symmetry, yada, yada. Uh, basically, look, I just want to get a basic sketch down, all right? I got the vertex right here, and I got a happy parabola, all right? Okay, so that's algebra. Now, let's do the same thing, but this time we're going to find the vertex right here. We're going to uh, use calculus to help us out, okay? So how does that work? Well, this is really cool stuff, okay? All right. 
So in calculus, there's something called a derivative, right? And there's the first derivative, second derivative. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of derivatives, but uh, well, not a whole bunch, but there's the first, the second, and, and uh, even third derivative. And um, those all mean things in terms of like, uh, well, obviously mathematics. But what you need to know is this, uh, the first derivative, and see here I have my equation y. When I write a little like apostrophe up there, that's called y prime. There's another notation that I'm not going to use for the uh, uh, derivatives in calculus, but it's very common. So I have an equation here, y, y is equal to this stuff. The first derivative I can write as y prime. Okay, so this is the equation. Here's its first derivative, that little apostrophe. But what does that mean? Well, the first derivative of a function is the equation for the slope. Now, remember the slope that we just talked about, right? The, uh, where it's going downhill like this. There's a negative slope, and then up here this way, it's positive. And then there, right where it does that U-turn, uh, the slope is zero. So this formula, okay, I can get what the first derivative will tell me what the slope is anywhere along this curve, anywhere along any curve, right? So it's very, very powerful, all right? So let me show you how we find the first derivative. It is like super easy. This is the answer to it, but let me um, let me show you. Whoops, I don't want to do that. That kind of messed me up. Let me let's just kind of reproduce this thing here right now. Okay, so how does this work? Well, let me actually draw this, write this out a little bit bigger. This is like easy, easy stuff. It's not hard at all. So when the calculus portion of this comes in to play, a lot of students are scared. Oh my goodness, I'm going to have to do this crazy math. No, you just, calculus is a lot of rules and they're not that difficult to follow. If you can understand algebra, you can understand calculus. Okay, so here's the rule for finding the first derivative, uh, y prime. So we take this little two right here and we're going to multiply it by the number in front of the x. So what's in front of the x? Just a positive one. So that's two times one is two. Okay, then we're going to write our x, and then this power is two. What I'm going to do is drop it down by one. Okay, so two minus one, all right, two minus one is one. So this is going to be two x to the first, or just two x, right? Because two x is the same thing as two x to the first. That's it, all right? So you're like, well, that's it. Well, not quite. What I have to do now is scoot over and do the same thing for the rest of these things in this equation. So this one right here is x to the first. So I'm going to go, okay, 1 times that negative 10. That's negative 10 x. Now I'm going to drop this down by 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. But what's x to the 0 power? Anything to the 0 power. Anything is 1. All right, so this is 1. So this is really negative 10 times 1. And then uh, when, when I do this right here, this just, uh, anytime you take a derivative of a number or what we call a constant, the answer is always zero. So this just goes away. So we're left with the first derivative, y prime, equaling to 2x minus 10. Okay, so that's how I got that answer. All right, so let me go ahead and erase that. And uh, pretty easy stuff. Okay, so if you're like, wow, I got to find the first derivative of this function, let's just do it again. Oh, this is going to be 2x, drop down that one, minus uh, 10, that is the first derivative. Okay, but what is the first derivative? Well, it's the slope. It's the slope of this parabola, okay? It's a, a formula for the slope, okay? So you're like, oh, that's so cool, all right? So like, this is the formula for the slope. So here is my uh, parabola. It's like, like this, right? And I have my slope right here. Here's my slope. My slope is having fun. It's doing all kinds of crazy stuff. It's like a roller coaster, right? Here's my slope. It's negative. Here's my slope. It's positive. Here's my slope exactly at the very, very bottom. It's zero. So I want to say, like, when is the slope equal to zero? Or when is the slope equal to zero? Because that's the very bottom. I know this is going to be part of my vertex. Well, I can figure that out, okay? I could say, hey, slope, when are you equal to zero, all right? So meaning that I'm going to set this 2x minus 10, uh, which is, in fact, the slope equal to zero, and then solve. So let's see that right now. Okay, so here, 2x minus 10, that is the first derivative, okay? But it really effectively, it's the slope of that parabola. So, hey, slope, when are you zero? Well, 2x minus 10, I solved that basic equation. 2x is equal to 10. x is equal to 5. Uh, hey, yeah, you know when the slope is 0 is when x is equal to 5. 
Now that is what's our X coordinate for our vertex. So if I want to know the exact precise X, Y point, I'm going to do the same thing as I did in the previous problem. I'll plug that five in to the equation and I get Y is equal to three, okay? But the slope is zero when X is five, okay? And that is uh, occurring at five, three. That is the same thing as the vertex. Remember the vertex is where it bounces off and this is what we call a uh, minimum in calculus, all right? So again, the slope here is negative, the slope here is positive, and right here at this precise point, the slope is zero, and we uh, determine that by just taking the first derivative of this lovely quadratic equation, and uh, which is, in fact, um, the equation for the slope. I um, solved that formula super easy, x equals five, plugged it in the same way, and there you go. You just use calculus to graph this uh, parabola, okay? Of course, well, everything else is gonna be the same, but calculus is tremendously powerful. And it's not that, well, I don't wanna um, underestimate, um, you know, calculus in terms of, you know, there are some definitely advanced topics in calculus. No, there's no doubt about it, okay? However, the essence of calculus, like what I've just shown you here, is, you know, this is what it is, right? We're dealing a lot with the derivatives and stuff. Um, is determining where the, uh, the slope is along a particular uh, function. And that's tremendously powerful. So many applications for this. Uh, I would just be like, you know, I could make this video like hours long, but we're not gonna do that, okay? Uh, now, hopefully you thought this video was cool, all right? Now, you know, so most, some of you are gonna be like, well, cool, I, I don't know about cool. I thought it was like neat, but you know, not that cool. But you know, for me, I would be like, wow, this is awesome. I would want to tell everybody. I'd be calling up my families, my sisters, my cousins. Hey, listen, did you know this? And they'd be like, yeah, uh, I gotta, I'm busy. I gotta go. <laughs> you know, I can't listen to all your math stuff. So when you're into math, you know, unfortunately, there's, you know, sometimes there's not other people that are going to be as excited about mathematics as yourself. But listen, if you uh, learned something from this video and you thought it was at least interesting, please consider smashing that like button, all right? My, the whole purpose here is to get you excited about calculus and just see the connection between algebra and calculus. And as, uh, you know, if you want to study calculus, which I would hope all of you want to, you know, uh, get there one day, you obviously got to understand algebra, right? Because every math builds upon itself. But there are these connections um, you know, in calculus, you'll, that you need to know about algebra, right? Like the slope, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, now if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for uh, 10 plus years. I have over a thousand videos. And if you like my teaching style, I have tons and tons of videos, uh, basic to advanced, organized and various playlists on my channel. And I'm producing new content all the time. Uh, but my best math help will be in my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.